the second and he gets it. Edgar 101. And the reason it's not widely remembered is because of the way the game finished. New Zealand needed a six off the last ball to tie the game. The umpires were consulted about how the Australians were going to stop a six coming off the last ball. Greg Chappell instructed his younger brother Trevor to bowl underarm. Well, it looks to me as if they're going to bowl underarm off the last ball. Rod Marsh is saying no, mate, but I'm sure he's going to bowl an underarm delivery on the last ball and bowl it along the ground and be sure that it has not been hit for six. The umpires have been told, the batsmen have been told, and they're going to bowl an underarm. We have believed it. And that's a disappointing finish. Disappointed, Brian, the technique the crowd boo. Passions ran high, arguments raged, comments reached prime ministerial level, and the rule book was rewritten. There was more unfriendliness at the MCG two years later. Dennis Lilly bouncing Lance Cairns. Ricochets down to third man to the play. Cairns' response is part of New Zealand cricket legend. He's got hold of it, it's a big one. It breaks his head over the square leg fence. What a magnificent hit. The big man picked him up, whipped him over the square leg, and the crowd rise to their feet. He's got it again, it's going to have to hit. That's right into the members. That's 15 metres back. That's one of the biggest hits we've ever seen at the Melbourne Cricket Ground this summer. He's still going at it, and that's an enormous hit. In fact, I think that one's gone further than the one that he hit off Ken McClay. McClay going back, and he won't go back far enough. It's into the stands again. And that one was outside the leg stump, he's got hold of it and lofted it over the fine leg fence. Cairns there hitting it with only one hand. And in spite of the fact he hits it with one hand, it still goes over the longest boundary of the MCG for six. Backs off again and thrashes that one. And that's clear, Graham Woods headed mid off. There's the sixth one. That must be an incredible bat he's got. The mighty Excalibur, which we were to see again later in the season. New Zealand well beaten by the Aussies, but they took it out on England, winning the series here 3-0. Glenn Turner going after Bob Willis. Turner quickly to eight. And that's superbly placed by Glenn Turner. Four more runs. While Turner was taking his runs elegantly in orthodox fashion, the immense power hitting of Lance Cairns made him a folk hero. Straight through Derek Randall's hands. I think that'll be signaled as six, it was. Well, that's got to be six. That's just about out of the park. New Zealand cricket had never known anything like it. Three years later, New Zealand had its biggest one-day win batting first. Captain Jeremy Coney led from the front. And that's a good shot. Straight down the ground, over the top. And they've decided to go down the ground. Beautifully struck away of a mid-wicket. New Zealand made an imposing 276 that day in Adelaide. When New Zealand took the field, Coney starred again. And uh, there's the equation, your first glimpse of that one. In the air and beautifully taken. What a magnificent catch by Jeremy Coney. In the air, he's got him again. What a magnificent fielder he is. Oh, he's got him. Another one. Well, Jeremy Coney has caught the third one of this innings. 
and well taken this time by McSweeney. So he cuts uh, Coney out of it. Water skies it. Hadley. In fact, it's Gillespie uh, at third man. That's out. Lead before wicket. Gillespie the bowler. Matthews the ex batsman. Well, there are two men out there. Only needs one to get underneath it. That's taken safely. In the air. And Chatfield takes the catch. So the short boundary has sucked Wayne Phillips in. And a good catch running in there by Ewan Chatfield. The shout there from Bruce Blair, and he's got a wicket. That's gone. Caught and bold. John Bracewell wraps up the innings. On that glorious day, New Zealand beat Australia by 206 runs. Four years later, it was much closer than that at Bell Reeve Oval. Australia needing two to win. Bruce Reed on strike. Oh, that's a wide, is it? Oh, it must be very close. Umpire Steve Randow under enormous pressure. Pringle. Reed gets it to the wicketkeeper. He stops it. Four balls remaining. Two runs required. Surely Pringle can get one on the stumps. In comes Pringle to Reed. He'll go over mid wicket if he goes anywhere. He cuts straight to right at point. Oh, it's a nerve tingle here at Bell Reeve. That uh, Chris Pringle, I'm sure, wants to jam one up right up in the block hole. I'm sure we need a bat pad now because they'll go for anything now, Australia. They certainly will. Right swings and misses, and, and in comes the wicket keeper. That's good keeping. Reed on strike. Swings and he misses. They don't run, so there's one ball. So it's now up to Bruce Reed. The final delivery of what's been a great match. He's missed it, and it's victory. He's run out, so New Zealand get two points. What a win. What a surprise. What a sensation. Chris Pringle in his first year at international level, he's gone on to be one of New Zealand's best one-day bowlers. Back home later that season, England was here. The best of three series going to the decider. Harris goes high over the top. That's going to be six. That's a magnificent strike from Christopher Harris. Oh, he's got hold of this one, Smith. And that's up on the terraces. And it, away it goes again. And one bounce this time. New Zealand defending 224. England undone by Ian Smith and Chris Cairns. Edge. He's out. And he knows it. Caught. Chris Cairns has got the breakthrough. New Zealand winning by seven runs, England losing its last seven wickets for 46. Cairns getting four wickets, his one day best, and New Zealand had a 2 1 series win, much to the delight of the Eden Park. It's over the top again, in the gap, mid wicket, Crow finds it. Oh, he cuts in the air away, but four runs. Good shot. And Crow's gone again. He swung Bruce straight away, and there's another four. He's over to toss him. Oh, magnificent shot. Well, it's a marvelous shot. Oh, he short sure runs. That's Crow at his very best. A brilliant shot. Oh, pulled away. Cracking shot. Oh, my goodness me, I haven't seen a b-ball hit harder in my life. <laughs> He's hit this one, not so hard. It's a long chase round there. Will they come back for three? They, yes, I think they'll make it. They will. And Crow's got the chance to get his hundred. Minute marvellous cricket, 4-4-3. Four, four, so Martin Crow to face on 99, two balls to go in the innings. He's chopped it down, they're running through. Cairns has made it. Oh, oh, it's a hundred invasion, that's the last thing we wanted. Oh heavens, Martin Crow is trying to push them away, running into the flood tide. I'm afraid this is going to take a moment or two. The young guns set the Aussies 249 and then unleashed their surprise new ball attack. I mean, how, how am I supposed to predict this? 
I mean, this is unbelievable, to say the least. A spin bowler with a new ball hasn't been used. Of course, two balls are used uh, in the, the innings here. And Patel is opening the bowling to the Australian uh, opening batsman. Jeff March on strike to Patel. And just tickling it around the corner for a single. Cairns from deep backward square having to hurry around. Taking him on, they're going to have to hurry. Jones always hurries, he's going to be out. He's taken it long once too often. And the wicket has fallen. He can't believe it. Dean Jones has not made his ground. He's out for 21, run out, and Australia are 92 for two. And the New Zealand fielder in this case, Young Cairns. He was equal to the occasion. Look at this for a throw right over the top of the stumps. And Jones was a long way short. A big hit that's in the air. He's going to be caught. He is caught. Larson. Magnificent catch. Cairns has just run around the square leg boundary. Always had it under control. And Border, who is trying to resurrect things for Australia, has fallen to Patel, he's out for three, and Australia is slumping, they're 104 for three now. Oh, he's oh, gone, he's, gone. he's, gone. he's, gone. he's taken. It's a marvellous catch by Latham. <laughs> Rod Latham and Tom Moody just hitting a catch back, but he had to move and dive to his left, and he did it and took it well. Superb catch. Australians in trouble. So David Boone on 99 facing Gavin Larson. And this is 100. What a fine knock. Hits it down to long off. Boone 100. That's his fourth one day 100. Maybe two. Will they come back? Yes, they are. This is... Uh, oh, it's at the stumps. Goodness me. Fantastic throw. Chris Harris has hit the stumps at the bowler's end, and Boone is out. He tries to swing it away. They're going for a run. He must be out. He is out. It's in the air. It's gone. Oh, there's another one gone. Straight to Andrew Jones, and he leaps in the air in excitement. And Australia's in tatters here at Eden Park. It's in the air. It could be out. It could be out. He could be caught down there. Yes. yes, it's over. It's all over. New Zealand have won. They've beaten Australia. The first game of the 1992 World Cup has gone to New Zealand. Well, I, I just kept... A couple of th simple thoughts in my head. One was to just have soft hands um, and, and to just play straight. And the other word I used was courage. I just felt that I had to have some courage out there and, and lead the way for the guys. Um, you've got to have courage to beat Australia. And uh, we had enough of that today. 37 runs the margin with 11 balls to spare. Against Sri Lanka, an injury launched a spectacular success story. Dabbing it down. And there's a, oh, a misfield here which bounces away from John Wright, I think it is. Yes, it is. The old campaigner, he will land on his shoulder. That doesn't look very, uh, that looks rather painful. In getting down to stop this ball, John Wright hurt his shoulder and left the field. He was to miss the next four games. As Wright departed, he was replaced by a man whose last three one-day international scores had been four, ten and five. It was a gentle start to the World Cup for Mark Greatbatch. More of him shortly. First, this match had to be won. Big hit by Rutherford. Six just made it over the boundary. That's nicely driven by Jones. That's through. And Andrew Jones goes for the big 
shot and hits it very well for the extra cover boundary for four. <laughs> He's got hold of this one and he said it well. And it's four. Good shot. Oh, Rutherford goes high, wide, and handsome over mid wicket for a magnificent four. That's so easy for his 50. A magnificent strike to complete a very fine innings from Ken Rutherford. One run required by New Zealand. And Rutherford lifts it. And that is the winning runs hit by Ken Rutherford. A win by six wickets. New Zealand two from two. Game three was South Africa at Eden Park. Patel with the new ball worked again. Hudson has bowled just as he was in Sydney. Bowled by the off spinner. And he's gone for one. And South Africa eight for the loss of their first wicket. He's going to be caught. First ball of the new over from Willie Watson. And Vessels is out. So further disaster for South Africa. Vessels caught Smith splendidly. Bob Watson for three. South Africa are 10 for two in the seventh over. Was it enough? Great Batch and Latham just blasted each South African bowler, putting on 114 in 80 minutes of Helter Skelter entertainment. I like it. Oh, look, that's that could be six. amazing. Boys away through the covers for four more. over the top, good shot, four more. <laughs> Lovely shot, Latham, four runs. Magnificently played, the New Zealand 50 is up. Snell, again, that's through, that'll go away for four more. Out to the cover, boundary. Snell, again, bang, into the stand. No, just short, one bounce. Well, this is just electrifying stuff from Mark Raybatch. Four bit of width again. You can't do that. That's four. Yeah. And there's a run here. Oh, it's three. That'll go away for four. Very short boundary. And there's his 50. Mark Raybatch, 50 runs. What a marvellous innings. And what fun it's been for the crowd here. Lower ball, but that's running away. I'm not quite sure whether it was bent on it. I think it might have been. We'll wait for umpire Kaiser Hyatt, who says four runs. But back in the middle, bang, four more. That's <laughs> so no extra cover for four, and it's almost dismissed to the boundary. Don't call me that. I haven't got time to muck around. The oh, gets oh, look at that one. That's smashes in the air. And that's way oh, up in the stands. I think it's on the top shelf. It's on the roof. Goodness gracious, that is colossal. <coughs> really, I was just looking to, to be part of the team effort and uh, get us off to a good start. Uh, and Rod and I were just looking at working in tens, and uh, fortunately the tens came reasonably quickly today. A seven-wicket win over South Africa. The runs kept coming against Zimbabwe. Pro goes high. Oh, what a drive. That's four. That just races through to the extra cover boundary. He really hit that beautifully. All over the top. That's six over cover. Whoa, what a thump that was. Mark Crow on strike. And over the top of cover it goes again. There's no man out, man out there, as we've been saying. And really, that's fatal stuff. Andrew Jones going for the big shot. It's high. And just short of the boundary, one bounce. And he's clipped this away. This is a lovely shot. Timed it beautifully. The bowlers also did the job. Down the wicket, and he's bowling. 
ball coming back a little and hitting the stumps. Butchard going high. He be could out. be caught. He yes. is caught. Chris Cairns has got it. So he's bombing. Andy Flowers is out. He's up in the air, though. Should be caught. He's going for it. Oh, yes. magnificent catch by Martin Crowe. Five wickets, then a run chase against India. Oh, he's short arm jab this one. Square of the wicket on the onside, six runs. Good shot. Straight down the ground. And this should run away, just keeping on going. And it has. Well, that was well played. It was time. Energy is hit for six. There's Crow going over square leg again. That's six. And Andrew going standing up, crashing it through the extra cover field. That should run away. There's a fair bit of rubbish out there, but it makes its way through it. A win by four wickets. By now, the fans were well and truly caught up in this thrilling run. England was special, and again, the gamble with Patel paid dividends. England set a target of 201. Such was New Zealand's confidence now. It was achieved with nine overs to spare. It's six runs. Well, he picked it up. Up by Steve Randall says that's six. And that's a cracking drive by Andrew Jones. No need to run for that. Pro Paul's in the way. Lovely shot. And four runs. What a win. Bro goes for it, and this could be it. Sailing out to the fence, and New Zealand have beaten England here at the Basin Reserve by seven wickets. Seven wins in a row, a run that came to an end against Imran Khan's Pakistan. The New Zealand game plan overturned with the loss of early wickets to the pace attack. Hakeem Javed to Latham. Oh, it's in the air, he's out, he's gone. Was he Macron? Oh, very full delivery. He's out. It's on the league's time and he's going to be caught, Crow. Yes! Oh, he's got a bit. He's got him. Yes, sent back. Ken Rutherford, run out. Must be stumped, surely he is. Well, that's a very good shot, then. A very good shot indeed by Larson. It's going to be in four runs. 166 was the total, always hard to defend, but it looked much better with two quick wickets. Danny Morrison with the new ball, about to bowl to Amir Sahal. Coming round the wicket. Oh, he's hooked. It's in the air. Could be out. Out. Oh, he's, got him. he's got him. Inside edge onto the stumps, and Danny Morrison has struck again. Inzamal Huck is bold. Inzamal on his way for five, and it was nine for two. But Pakistan steadied from there and cruised home. Looking shot that should run away for four. Oh, good looking shot from me and dad off the back foot, flipped away into the offside. Pretty square of the wicket for four runs. And he's whacked this one all oh, just wide of mid on. 
just wide of mid on. That's to the boundary, and that will give Pakistan the victory that they need to get through to 167 for three in the 45th over. In the semi final, a record partnership between Rutherford and Crow. Good shot, lovely shot. Over pitching, Mushtaq driven away through the onside. The timing was there, four runs. Just as New Zealand was looking for the big charge at the end, Crow was stopped in his tracks. John Wright took over in the field, and there was early success. Sweeping. He's gone. He's caught. Great excitement in the New Zealand camp. Imran and me and Dad slowly put Pakistan back in the game and set the scene for one of the innings of the World Cup. See then, he's only just made his debut. He's a newcomer to the side. Oh, and that was a fine shot, ripping it away off his legs. That really was a beautiful stroke. And he's going away to the middle wicket boundary. It reaches it. In the man, old hack. Facing up to Harris. He hit that in the air, but that's one bounce for four. Very close to being a six. The they had got to stop and you know, New Zealand did well when they batted to uh, take full advantage of the lapses in the fast bowling. Well, valiant effort to bring that one back, but it's over the fence. That's six. Magnificent shot from Inzaman Mulhak. Sunshine bathing the park at the moment. Inzaman down the wicket again. There is nobody in the deep out there. The great batch gets around to stop the boundary. They're going to come back for three. For Harris. Oh, he's hit away. That's four. Over pitching. There's no one out there on the boundary. He hits firmly. He hits well. Gets the gap too. Straight through for four. Big shot again, the gap's still there, it's another four. Well, there's his 50 for Enzaman al -Haq. It's his third one-day 50, but it's his first at this tournament, so he's really taken the right time to come into form. 50 from only 31 balls, and 215 for four, 43 overs completed. So that's Martin Crow resting a hamstring but 
He must be a worried man right now. Oh, that's big over mid-wicket. That's going to be four more. It won't carry for six. And Latham can't get to it. And the noise has frightened even the seagulls away. Could be out to six. Six runs six. into the crowd from Moen. And that surely has settled it. An extraordinary six by Moen Korn. Chris Harris still has one delivery left in this over. So there's still seven balls to be bowled. Venom, of course. What a shot under pressure like well, that. That's a match winning shot, isn't it? Oh, it was a phenomenal stroke. Again, Smith's face tells the story. Indeed. And, and all really their faces. It. Yes. That's it. And there it is now. Is that going away for that's four? It. I think it is. And it's turns round and it's into the boundary there for four. And it is at the end of the match. Pakistan have won the semi final. And they won there by four wickets. The rest of the side come running on. Javed is kissing the ground. They can't believe it. Pakistan overjoyed at reaching the final they were to win. For the New Zealanders, there was honour in defeat. This team wrote a special chapter in New Zealand cricket history. For four weeks, they made us all sit up and take notice. The Eden Park crowd paid tribute for all of us as the team took an emotional lap of honour. Still stunned at having lost a game, they looked to have won just an hour before. The roller coaster ride had ended in despair, but the memories of a golden four weeks live on. These are the faces of the men who exceeded the hopes of most by reaching the semi final. Guided by a man whose batting was the mainstay of New Zealand's World Cup of 1992.